Spike, you know how I'm a terrible hypochondriac? I've noticed. I've, I have a real fear of the germ menace. Okay. Mostly because, you know, when, when I was working with primates, you... Did I ever tell you about the time I worked with primates? Uh, you have told me about that. I didn't know it gave you a germophobia. Okay, so here's the thing say? we had to do. I was working with gibbons, and gibbons are gross, nasty, violent little creatures. And they all have, like, HPV... They all have hepatitis. Yeah, it's like it just really? yeah, because they're gross. They all have they all have herpes. They're all gross, nasty little creatures. They look like little Ewoks. Yeah, yeah. In reality, yeah. if you were to try to 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 hold one, it would break your fingers and blind you. It, they are vicious, nasty little creatures. So when I was working with gibbons, one of the things we had to do whenever we went into the pens to feed them. Is we because they, they eat like kale and bananas mm -hmm. and it's very stereotypical. So we would have to first wash all the veggies, right? Okay. And then we would have to wash our hands, go into the pen, dump it into their trough basically, and then any piece of metal that we touched, we had to make a mental note to not then touch ourselves anywhere. Wow. Walk out of the enclosure and then wash our hands, lest we get any myriad of diseases. Yeah. It's this is gross. why I stopped running a daycare. Same reasons. <laughs> exact same right. Reason. So taking care of gibbons is kind of like taking care of gross little kids. Yeah. Except for the gibbons want to blind you and rip off your fingers. Little so, kids aren't any different, I'm telling you. So I get push notifications for different products for people who are severely mentally ill, like for people who have my level of germophobia. Oh, okay. Right, and one of the things that I got pushed for the first time was this morning. I saw this ad, it's for something called Spooky 2, and I thought it was a joke. I and I it was a movie. I still think, <laughs> 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 I still think it's a joke. I have yet to confirm it. But what it is, get, take, check this out, man. It is a generator. It's called the Spooky 2 Scalar Generator X Pro Essential Kit. And the idea is that you can cure, for the low, low price of $2,100, you can cure Lyme disease, cancer, all kinds of maladies. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but... Yeah, by taking a piece of your biology and you put it into the Spooky 2. You see that? I see you it. put it into the Spooky 2... And you do a photograph in one area, and uh -huh. then a piece of your biology. So a lock of hair, okay. a thumbnail. Okay. A little, little skin, a, and a then thumbnail? You, uh, yeah, anything you want. And okay. then you do beep, boop, beep, boop. And then all of a sudden, you're going to be, it's pure science, okay, first and foremost, science-based. And you can cure Lyme disease, and you can cure cancer, according to the ads. Now, this is trash. This is garbage. But the ad that I saw was basically this guy saying, my my auntie or whatever uh -huh. had had awful cancer start he he randomly finds one of her thumbnails one of her fingernails uh -huh. and he puts her fingernail in the photo in the generator and then she was bedridden she couldn't get up but the second he fires on the generator somewhere in liverpool she says oh i need to start gardening and he said it's a spooky too that's how it works and if you look at the website look at this you can spend unbelievable amounts of money Nine hundred dollars for the Spooky Two generator, twenty six hundred dollars to twenty nine hundred dollars. You can get the starter pack. This is I can't tell if this is a joke, like if it's a meme, or if this is a legitimate business where they're trying to tell people for the low low price of a lock of your own hair, a photograph, uh, <laughs> and twenty one hundred dollars. Look at this. Look good. Is look it, at the good vibes. Is coming it bombarding her with good vibes? I get. Look at this. You put down random things. You put down vibes, and it cures you. And the thing that gets me about this is like, is this is this some elaborate Kafka esque joke? Like, is this some this is the is this somebody who is spending millions of dollars to troll everybody, or is this like someone who legitimately believes? that spending $4,000 on spooky two generators is going to cure your Lyme disease. <gasps> Those flowers were dead. Now they're coming back to life. <laughs> <laughs> and, and your question is, is this a scam? Yes. This is your question? Right. But okay. Or is it just like one of the greatest jokes I've ever seen? Because if it's a joke, 
It's hilarious. It's, it's very, very good. Go to spooky2 slash fullinhismoney.com. Right. Like, this is an excellent way to separate somebody from $2,000. And if this is the grift, yeah. I, I think the only answer is to, for you to try to, to buy get one, one Jack. And to, okay. Can, can we expense this? Can we expense this? Yeah, right? Can we show research? Because Brian's out of town this week, so let's that's definitely a good, do it. It's never now, been yeah. a better time for a spooky <laughs> two. <laughs> Sorry, Brian. We needed a spooky two. So, think of the money we'll save the citizens of the great Northwest. <laughs> right? We're going to troubleshoot this scam. I for know. you, let's get Bob Ferguson on the phone too and report these. I'm people. gonna put uh, uh, the Nielsen ratings and a photo of you guys into the spooky <laughs> too. We're gonna really we're gonna change, okay. gonna change people's perspective <laughs> on the show. So they're here to help. So this is what this is what it. What is the who is spooky too? Okay, spooky too is the most highly advanced and versatile rife system in the world. It's been developed since 2013 by an international team of electronics engineers, technical designers, software developers, and Rife practitioners. What is Rife? <laughs> what is this? It is the world's largest frequency database. So it's basically the equivalent of essential oils or of, so we're just going to pump good vibes into you so that you feel better. Which is like, hey man, if that was true, the Grateful Dead would be curing cancer all over the place. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if that was true, if every time I listened to Althea, I'd be like, oh, my back pain is oh, gone. Got to have love. <laughs> right? Everybody can write. So my question to you, Spike, is: Did you ever fall for a scam? Essential oils, essential herbs. Did you ever carry around ninja shurikens and endangered flower petals to cure your rickets? No, no. I, I was, I was initially scammed in the concept that drinking could cure a, a relationship but that fell apart quickly and i stopped it buying and <laughs> it can't I, I, i've been really lucky I've, I've never had the means to be suckered okay <laughs> you know, i'm not a target rich wow. environment yeah right i consider myself lucky to be just borderline poverty yeah. my whole life you the, wanted to be scammed a bunch i would of times, love to be taken to the cleaners just... that means i'd have a cleaner to yeah. take it to. Yeah. so i got i got scammed one time it's kind of my own fault though is uh so back in the day when marijuana was illegal okay this is way it just so for all you kids out there in the building right now back in many years ago marijuana was illegal you were not allowed to be in possession of it okay and so at head shops what they would sell was spray paint cans with, with they were empty and okay. you would screw off the bottom and you'd hide all Secret your stash you put all your weed in it and right. they had soda cans right. but because they couldn't get the licensing for like coca-cola oh. or <laughs> mr pib or right. whatever or like uh, you know uh sun-kissed orange soda they had similar labels but the, the title was a soda that nobody had ever heard of. Right. So it was like Mr. Burst. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Or it was like <laughs> it was like spray or whatever. Dr. You, Clever. Yeah. It yeah. was it was so stupid, so transparent. So I got the one that was like orange burst because I thought it was the most it looked like sun yeah, kiss. Yeah. And there's a lot of orange sodas. And I and I put my pipe and my weed in it, and it was supposed to be completely you couldn't smell right, anything couldn't in it. Any, right. You yeah. couldn't tell. I got pulled over by a cop because my back tail light was out. My car reeked of pot. I reeked of pot. And then he says, so when's the last time you smoked pot? And I was like, uh, a week ago. <laughs> yeah, sure. What's the statute of limitations? So they toss my car looking for the weed that I have and f fool me once, fool me twice. The first thing he goes for is he goes right for the can, uh, screws off the bottom uh -huh. and is like, all right, big guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, he yeah, totally yeah. popped me. Damn. Cool cop, though. He just made me step on it and promised never to do it again while he towed my car away. I wonder if it was because I was crying hysterically like a girl. <laughs> might have, been, you know might have got you out of it. I think it was. I was literally, I was in hysterics. I, you know when you're crying so much, your voice is like really high. Yeah. So you're like, I don't want to go to jail. I don't want to go to jail. I didn't mean to try with marijuana. I don't smoke it again. <laughs> So he, I think he thought, I can't take this little girl to jail. Right. I, think I can't take this poor woman to jail. She's she's can't handle it. So he just made me step on it and promised never break, to do break it the again. Pipe, grind the weed into the girt. Funny yeah. part of that story is they tow my car and they say, okay, you've learned your lesson. And I said, yep. They left me. There was no bus. Side of the road? Side of the road. No bus. No public transportation. And I go, well, I guess I can walk from here. So it was like. Little cop? No, to, oh, after it was gone. Because they just left me there. Yeah. It was like 10 o'clock at night. It was in the middle of this like... At night? Yes. <laughs> That's when Jack wrote the screenplay, The Hills Have Eyes. Right. And so they just left me there. And I'm assuming that they thought that I would call one of my friends, but my cell phone was in the car that they had just oh. towed. So I'm just standing on the side of the road being like, 
I guess I'll just go home now. You know, it just walked home. So that's the only scam that I ever fell for, basically. Long story short, I totally scammed out of that nonsense. Well, I'm glad you learned your lesson. Yeah. Don't I'm try glad. to cheat the, the man. Yeah, and don't try the spooky, too, <laughs> would, would be my suggestion. Leave that to us. You're going to end up crying hysterically. I spent $2,100 on, on good vibes. 